Hello, can everybody hear me? Does everybody hear me? Great. Okay. Um, so uh, we have in Canada this project called GenApp, where we provide uh, between, uh, among others, uh, tools, Galax, to uh, serve uh, the, our community. And basically in GenApp, the users instantiate their own, their, their own Galaxy. And, uh, and this Galaxy is attached to an HPC center, so it's not actually a cloud, but we have hundreds of galaxies to, uh, that are instantiated in our, uh, in our uh, project. So through our interface, a user will basically uh, choose which type of application he will create, and then the university where he would put that Galaxy instance. So we serve galaxies not in only one HPC center, but actually uh, across the country. So, um, and that's what one of our galaxies would look like. Look like so. It's, it's, it's a, uh, basically a mirror of the the main galaxy, the use galaxy. So one of our challenges is how to serve terabytes of genome reference across the country, uh, uh, since uh, some of the the HPC center cannot store uh, those that amount of data, and also how to serve. Uh, actually, we serve the whole galaxy through through this uh, CMFS. So. The CVMFS is actually a file system created by the CERN uh, in uh, Switzerland, where uh, you can act, you can ship. Uh, you're going to have actually a central point uh, of data uh, introduction. So you're going to put all your data here, and then you distribute your data. We call that the stratum zero, uh, and then you commit your data, and this data gets distributed. Um, to, to another stratum, which is called stratum one, and from the stratum one, this data is served to to the to the clusters. So, basically, what happened is uh, when you uh, a librarian put the data here, this data gets uh, so terabytes of data in our case. This data gets propagated to stratum one, which serve as a replicating uh, replication point, and this data gets served into the into every cluster. Uh, for what we call a squid cache. Uh, what happened here is that the data that is in the cluster is not what it is, it is inside of the stratum one. The data gets pushed, uh, pulled to the, pushed to the stratum, uh, to, the, to the cluster only when the user needs. So I can have terabytes of data uh, in my stratum one and perhaps just one genome inside of my galax uh, in, the, in that cluster, which was the, the the, the genome reference that the user asked during its job. So when a user runs the job and selects a genome from a Galax, uh, the squid cache is going to look inside uh, of uh, its table and going to ask whether or not I have that genome locally. If it doesn't, then uh, the genome is fetched from the stratum one. Uh, we modify this, the, the squid cache to keep the genome for one year in a cluster once it's downloaded. So after it's... Um, after uh, one year passes, that genome is removed. So that allows me to uh, only have the genome that my, my uh, user base uh, needs in every cluster. So if this cluster is only used by microbiologists, there is no reason why I would have uh, referenced human genomes here uh, and vice versa for other organisms. Uh, so I, I was happy to learn also that uh, by, from Nathan that uh, the main Galax, the use Galax, also is using this model, uh, which kind of uh, says that we're, what we're doing is a good thing, is a right thing to do. So because of that, uh, last week before coming here, I uh, was awarded a uh, prize for, for, from Compute Canada. And mainly this prize was for uh, putting Galax a serving Galax through Compute Canada in different, different uh, clusters. So some of the, uh, there be the PI that actually voted for, for this award said that, uh, that uh, it's a genome canaris tool that makes it easier to, to use even for beginners, and it helped more than 100 um, researchers to use Compute Canada, which they would not have used ever because they don't have the expertise. So I actually just want to share this award and say that this award belongs to all of you, uh, to the uh, core team, to the developers, uh, to the two developers, and actually to the whole community. So uh, congratulations to all of you and that award. You, you well deserve 
uh, that. So thank you very much. Do we have any questions for David? Any congratulations across the rows here to all of us, <laughs> all of you? Um, I, so I have a question. Um, what did you run into so when you were adapting a file system that was developed by CERN for high energy physics data? What kind of differences did you run into um, with Galaxy bioinformatics data? What kinds of things did you have to? Right. Uh, the main difference is, uh, well, uh, is that the file system to the end user is a read-only file system. So the user doesn't have the power to manipulate the, the, to the, the tools and the data set itself which is actually a good thing at the end of the day because it allows me to be the only person that can manipulate the data and knowing that if there was a mistake, I'm the only one to be blamed. So uh, that's the advantage. Yeah, yes, exactly. It's a, it's a file system over, uh, over the, the user space. So what the user sees is, is, a, is in the directory with all the genomes there. So. Exactly. So the only difference is you're gonna, you put an expiration date for the files that the user downloads. So after that expiration date, they, that file is removed. So you don't keep anything on the, the you know, on the machine on the, unless you actually need it. <laughs>